candide by voltaire chapter twenty eight what happened to candide cunegonde pangloss martin etc i ask your pardon once more said candide to the baron your pardon reverend father for having run you through the body say no more about it answered the baron i was a little too hasty i own but since you wish to know by what fatality i came to be a galley-slave i will inform you after i had been cured by the surgeon of the college of the wound you gave me i was attacked and carried off by a party of spanish troops who confined me in prison at buenos aires at the very time my sister was setting out thence i asked leave to return to rome to the general of my order i was appointed chaplain to the french ambassador at constantinople i had not been eight days in this employment when one evening i met with a young ichoglan who was a very handsome fellow the weather was warm the young man wanted to bathe and i took this opportunity of bathing also i did not know that it was a capital crime for a christian to be found naked with a young mussulman a cadi ordered me a hundred blows on the soles of the feet and condemned me to the galleys i do not think there ever was a greater act of injustice but i should be glad to know how my sister came to be a scullion to a transylvanian prince who has taken shelter among the turks but you my dear pangloss said candide how can it be that i behold you again it is true said pangloss that you saw me hanged i should have been burnt but you may remember it rained exceedingly hard when they were going to roast me the storm was so violent that they despaired of lighting the fire so i was hanged because they could do no better a surgeon purchased my body carried me home and dissected me he began with making a crucial incision on me from the navel to the clavicula one could not have been worse hanged than i was the executioner of the holy inquisition was a sub-deacon and knew how to burn people marvellously well but he was not accustomed to hanging the cord was wet and did not slip properly and besides it was badly tied in short i still drew my breath when the crucial incision made me give such a frightful scream that my surgeon fell flat upon his back and imagining that he had been dissecting the devil he ran away dying with fear and fell down the staircase in his flight his wife hearing the noise flew from the next room she saw me stretched out upon the table with my crucial incision she was seized with yet greater fear than her husband fled and tumbled over him when they came to themselves a little i heard the wife say to her husband my dear how could you take it into your head to dissect a heretic do you not know that these people always have the devil in their bodies <laughs> i will go and fetch a priest this minute to exorcise him at this proposal i shuddered and mustering up what little courage i had still remaining i cried out aloud have mercy on me at length the portuguese barber plucked up his spirits he sewed up my wounds his wife even nursed me i was upon my legs at the end of fifteen days the barber found me a place as lackey to a knight of malta who was going to venice but finding that my master had no money to pay me my wages i entered the service of a venetian merchant and went with him to constantinople one day i took it into my head to step into a mosque where i saw an old iman with a very pretty young devotee who was saying her paternosters her bosom was uncovered and between her breasts she had a beautiful bouquet of tulips roses anemones ranunculus hyacinths and auriculas she dropped her bouquet i picked it up and presented it to her with a profound reverence i was so long in delivering it that the iman began to get angry and seeing that i was a christian he called out for help they carried me before the cadi who ordered me a hundred lashes on the soles of the feet and sent me to the galleys i was chained to the very same galley and the same bench as the young baron 
On board this galley there were four young men from Marseilles, five Neapolitan priests, and two monks from Corfu, who told us similar adventures happened daily. The baron maintained that he had suffered greater injustice than I, and I insisted that it was far more innocent to take up a bouquet and place it again on a woman's bosom than to be found stark naked with an Ichaglan. We were continually disputing, and received twenty lashes with a bull's pizzle when the concatenation of universal events brought you to our galley, and you were good enough to ransom us. "'Well, my dear Pangloss,' said Candide to him, "'when you had been hanged, dissected, whipped, and were tugging at the oar, "'did you always think that everything happens for the best?' "'I am still of my first opinion,' answered Pangloss, "'for I am a philosopher, and I cannot retract, "'especially as Leibniz could never be wrong. "'And besides, the pre-established harmony is the finest thing in the world.' and so is his plenum and materius subtilis. End chapter 28